Surfshark addresses mobile app UI feedback. The iOS app is getting a neat quality of life update. Why did Surfshark remove server load bubbles? And Surfshark's annual DQL study is now live. This and much more coming right up. Hello and welcome back to Surfshark Academy, the channel that brings you the latest Surfshark news, tech news, and other fun content that you just cannot miss. First things first, two years. That's how long we've been making monthly Surfshark update videos. Here's me in one of our first episodes just starting out in yeah, rocking that sweet Surfshark shirt alongside my Mac computer with a custom logo, feeling a bit nervous, not gonna lie. Those first few times were really nerve rattling, but time has flown so fast. And honestly, I'm just curious to know how many of you have been watching our channel since 2021, back when we were just getting started on YouTube. But enough celebrations, now let's get into the news. It's not a Surfshark monthly update video if I don't discuss the latest app UI changes. For the past few months, we've been talking about Surfshark's mobile app UI on Android, and your feedback has been loud and clear. The Home tab needs some work. Well, with the Android app 3.2.0 update, you will no longer see the Home tab, though the updated VPN screen will still be there. Now, while the Home tab is currently gone, it will be coming back. In fact, the team over at Surfshark is already hard at work on the new Home tab that should address all the criticisms brought up by the community. So definitely stay tuned for that. But for now, the classic VPN dashboard is still here, but looking a bit newer and sleeker, which I'm sure you'll like. Over on Windows, version 5.2.0 has been released, and while you won't see any changes changes visually, there has been a huge improvement internally in the app. This is due to the app now running on an updated .NET environment. There's a lot that goes into this, and I will spare you all the technical details. However, with this change, the biggest benefit will be faster app development, which definitely is a good thing in my book. If you have any issues or suggestions for the Surfshark Windows app, put them in the comments just below that like button, and I will do my best to forward them to the Surfshark dev team. Hey, have you ever scrolled through the VPN locations list and felt like things could look a bit more organized? Well, the new Surfshark iOS app version 3.14 will now be similar to the Android app and bundle locations under the same country into a single listing. This makes the whole locations list look a whole lot cleaner. But if you want to see all possible servers within a particular location, you can click on this arrow here to expand the listing. Most important of all, if you just click on a location which has several different cities or server locations, the app will now pick the fastest one automatically and connect you to it. So overall, it's a small yet very neat change that will help you find the best VPN location, which is very important. By the way, Linux users, do you like notifications? With the latest Surfshark Linux app 1.6.0 update, you will now see auto connect notifications. So now you will know when the VPN was enabled automatically. Another change was for the kill switch alert pop-up. If you ever had a kill switch error when connecting to a location you haven't used before, now the pop-up will be a lot more clear on what to do if you encounter this. Aside from these updates, the Turkish language has also been removed from the app. You might remember that a while back we announced this for the other app as well, and the main reason for its removal was the lack of usage of certain languages. Supporting languages actually isn't as clear-cut as it might seem, as it does add further complexity to app's development. So while it is sad to see this language go, it will result in faster updates and extra features going forward. Firefox and Edge browsers also received the 4.3.1 Surfshark extension update, which brings all of the changes from previous updates, including the new alternative ID tool, manifest v3 compliance, a new user interface, and much more. It's a big jump and definitely worth checking out. Make sure to update your extension if you haven't already. By the way, you might be wondering why the extension on Chrome always seems to get the latest updates first compared to Firefox or Edge. The simplest explanation is that it really all comes down to the platform holders approving the updates submitted by Surfshark. And the reality is that Google seems to approve them much faster, hence why it's always the first to receive the new updates. But obviously, if you're on Firefox or Edge, there's no need to worry. Surfshark hasn't forgotten you. It's just that it takes a bit extra time to approve those updates. For this next segment, I really want to congratulate the country of France because Guess what? France ranked number one in the latest Surfshark Digital Quality of Life study for 2023. No, seriously, France, Finland, and Denmark have all made the top three list compared to over 100 countries based on how good their internet really is. And not just that alone, DQL also takes into consideration factors like internet infrastructure, internet affordability, speed, e-government, and a lot of other factors that are detailed in the methodology section. Every year, it's fun to check out where each country ranks, which ones improved, maybe which ones dropped a couple places compared to last year. And I was actually very happy to see that Lithuania, which is where I'm from, 
came in 13th place. But I'm interested to know where your country ranks. Do let me know in the comments below. Oh, and also leave the whole study in the description so you can check it out. Let's now move on to our monthly community poll feature. Every single day we release a poll on our YouTube channel related to technology and security and really anything that you might find interesting. Like once we ran a poll asking whether YouTube should bring back the dislike counter to which 95% of you said yes. So really with these polls, expect the unexpected. And like I've said, they do come out daily. So there's always something to look forward to. This time I wanted to feature this poll where I asked, which password out of these is the most secure? And here I included three options. The first one obviously being a bit of a joke, but the other two were meant to test you guys. 67% of you picked the second option, which is a good guess, but it isn't 100% correct. Password security depends on many things, but if we're mainly talking about password crackers, well, the most secure password here would actually be the third one due to its length. We actually made a whole video about passwords, which I will link right here and in the description below. So go check that out if you're curious on the topic of how to create a good password. Finally, let's go over our highlighted comment from the latest Surfshark update video. This comment comes from the user called Dravsinga18857. And sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, but he asks, I love those updates, just one doubt. Why did you guys remove those bubbles which used to show server load? The bubbles that Dropsinga is referring to are these right here that used to show up next to every location in the Surfshark app. Now I say used to show up because, well, they were seemingly removed a while back. The main reason for their removal was that while the server load bubbles did provide good information, Surfshark did get mixed feedback regarding them. Like they were not as easy to understand for most users. Some of you even thought they were server speed bubbles, which added even further confusion. Like, okay, is the server with a bubble that's more filled better to connect to, or is it the one in which the bubble is less filled? You know what I mean? So it's not very clear. And I personally did like these server load bubbles, but the Surfshark team decided to remove them and rethink how to best display server load that would be understandable for the majority of users. But that will be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And before you go, make sure to check out our last video, uh, which I will link right over here in case you missed it. And also leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And that'll be all for me. I'll see you next time.